Pterodactyl here, and my next project, or Terrell's toy, is going to be on this here, 1969 Roof Palomino. This is a 69 Roof Palomino. This was an actual lawnmower that had a 60 inch deck underneath it. I think they kind of made them for uh, like golf courses and municipalities to cut grass with because you could drive two people in it. And it looks just like a Willys Jeep. These things are real rare. Now I've had this for about five or six years now. I've been looking for one for about 20, 30 years and I finally found one. So when I got it, I got it running and was using it, but it's a lawnmower, so it only goes as fast as a lawnmower. I want it to go faster than a lawnmower. I want it to be like a, like a golf cart. Now when I got it, the mower deck was missing, so I had no mower deck. And you can tell it was a lawnmower, because right on the dash, it says blade clutch, on and off. So there was a lever on here that engaged the blades. Pretty cool, ain't it? It's rare and worth money. Even in this condition, it's worth money. So, at some point, I started tearing it apart to repower it. I wanted to make it faster, and I wanted to make it quiet. I didn't want it to be like a lawnmower. And I was trying to think, how am I going to repower this thing? And what am I going to use to repower it? You know, I got to have reverse, and I want to be able to go forward, but yet I want it to be fast. So, I took out the existing transmission, which was a big trans hydraulic, hydrostatic transmission that was back here. And the, mo and the part of the transmission sat up about this high. Okay, this is the hydrostatic transmission that was in that roof Palomino. And this is where the dry shaft hooked, right on here. But there was something wrong with this trans because it had no power. It wouldn't even pull up a hill. And like I said, it only went as fast as a, as a lawnmower, which wasn't very fast. And this is the parking brake for it. Now this axle from here to here is 43 inches wide. So that's something else I gotta keep in mind. Gotta have something wide enough to put in the, in the Jeep. And then it had a horizontal engine in it. It had a twin cylinder uh, Kroller Magnum opposed twin engine. Twin cylinder opposed Kroller. And then the drive shaft ran right through the middle. So there was a big metal box, which I still have, that ran through the middle. I have everything for this Jeep. I have all the seats, I have all the sheet metal. I know it looks like it's missing some parts, but I have everything. And another thing I did is I moved the steering box. This steering box used to be up inside the, the Jeep. This box was up here, but in order for me to like hook up a gas pedal in that, I had to move it down. So I had to reposition the steering box and I redid the steering. And I made stronger the steering. It had those regular lawnmower type ball joints on the steering. I don't trust them. So I put Heim joints on it, which are stronger and better. So I found a lawn tractor rear end that I started to mount in here and then I had to expand it to make it wide enough and then I was thinking you know then I'm gonna have to run belts or a chain and I don't want that I want it to be like a car you know I want it to be like a Jeep I want it to have a drive shaft and a shifter I want it to be like a regular Jeep and then I remounted a motor in it I put an opposed a vertical shaft opposed twin Briggs. I mounted in here. And then, then I stopped. And I quit working on it. And I was thinking, what can I repower this thing with that would be that way? Something shaft drive, 
electric start, it's got a reverse. What can I use? Got gears. By Joe, I've got it! 1984 Honda 200 EF. Got reverse, shaft drive, gears. That'd be perfect. So this is what I want to use. I'm going to take the powertrain out of this here three-wheeler and put it in that Jeep. Now, I had to find a three-wheeler. I had one of these a few years ago that I was going to use to repower that Jeep, but it was so nice, I didn't want to cannibalize it. So I ended up selling it. Plus it was a little bit of a different model. It was a little newer. Because the drive shaft came off of the side and went to the back. So the rear end was offset. So it wasn't in the center. So that was kind of a drawback. This 1984, this has got low and high and reverse. So there's your high gears, your low gears, and there's your reverse. And the drive shaft is in the center of the motor and in the center of the rear end. So this one will be perfect. It's got electric start and rope start. I found this on eBay, $300. It was in Colorado. I'm in Indiana. I'm like, what am I going to do? Road trip to Colorado to pick up this bike? Man, this thing's going to slip away from me. All of a sudden, about a week later, customer comes in, Dr. Bob, wants me to fix his generator. Says, I'm gonna drop it off and I'll pick it up in a week when I come back from, you guessed it, Colorado! I said, what part of Colorado? Grand Junction, that's where the bike was, Grand Junction. I said, hey, you pick up this bike for me if I buy it? He said, sure. I said, I'll fix your generator for free. Sure enough, he went and got it. Perfect candidate, this bike. It was missing the seat. This is just how I got it. So now I don't feel bad tearing it apart because it's in pretty rough shape. Now I don't even know if it runs. So these are my plans. This rear end is narrower. This is 31 inches wide from hub to hub. The roof Palomino, the Jeep, it's got to be 43 inches. So that's a difference of 12 inches, one foot. So I'm going to have my machinist buddy make me a couple of wheel adapters. So we can go from the four lug, because that's what holds this wheel on, four lugs. Well, actually, it's got a hub on there, but it's got a four bolt pattern. We'll make a set of wheel adapters out of al aluminum and then we'll go to five bolt so that way I can keep the original five bolt wheels on it so it looks, you know, like it's supposed to. So, first thing we got to do is get this thing running, see if it'll start. So, I checked it. Got to make sure it's got oil in it. and pull the tank off. Next thing we want to do is check for spark. So I got my spark tester. I made up a little a little thing because these motorcycles you know they take the cap off and then I want to put a cap on there. Now on this bike, you don't need the battery to power it. The battery is for the, for the electric starter mainly. So let's see if it's got spark. Compression release up. Oh yeah, it's got spark. Now I was going to check compression, but this has got a different thread size. 
it's not 14 millimeter and the adapter for my compression tester is missing. But it feels like it's got compression yellow. So let's put a new plug in it. And we'll shoot it with a little go juice and we'll see if it'll fire. And if it does, that's, that's a good sign. Then our next step will be to make sure all the gears work. All right, I'm gonna shoot a little carburetor spray in there in the throat of the carburetor. Let's see if this thing will lick off. Uh-oh. Woo! She done licked off. All right, let's, let's check the electrical system a little bit here. Here's the positive. And I don't see the ground cable. This is our solenoid for the starter. So I'm just gonna ground it right to the frame. Okay, look, we got neutral light. So this switch works. That ain't the original switch. So we got a neutral light. Let's see if electric start works. No. I can hear the solenoid clicking. It's probably, oh, there it goes. It's bad. Let's see if we got juice to the start. I give Mr. Test Light. Look it to the negative. Now I'm gonna go to the cable on the starter, hit the button, see if it lights up. No. So solenoid's bad. But I can use a lawnmower solenoid. I don't have to use that Honda one. So let's go right to the starter. See if it'll crank. I'm gonna go right to the starter post. Well, it's spinning. So, it's probably just frozen. I'll have to take that off and try to clean it. All right, well, I guess I'll take the carburetor off, clean it out, put some gas to it, maybe take that starter off, See if we can get this thing running before we go tearing it apart to put it in the, in the roof Palomino, 1969. Look it up, Google it. Well, I went through the carburetor and cleaned it all out and I got my temporary tank hooked up to it and I got a battery just hooked to it temporary. And then I took a look at why the electric start didn't, wouldn't spin the motor over and found out there's a one-way clutch in here and I guess they would screws would come out of it and it would malfunction and somebody was in there messing with it so I had to go on the inner screen and I found me a good used one and I'm waiting for that to come in so I could fix the electric starter so let's go ahead and see if we can start it let me choke it put the compression release on So 
looks like everything works. Now it's time to start stripping it apart and figuring out how we're gonna take this and put it in that. Stay tuned. Well, I've been working on the Honda 200 ES to get it ready to put the motor in the Jeep. And the first thing I wanted to figure out is why that electric start wouldn't work. And I found out it was because of this one-way clutch. This is the flywheel that goes on the ATC and it's got a one-way clutch. This is the gear, this is a starter gear. And it's got a bunch of other gears that run off of it. And it's got a needle bearing. And how it works is this will spin one way and then it locks the other way. Well, it wasn't locking, it was just spinning. And that's because somebody was in here messing around. So what I think had happened is these screws backed out and must have broke. That's why this is all... Looks like somebody had been grinding on it and sanding and it's all nicked up. So I went and got some new screws and how this thing works is it's got springs with little caps and these little roller things here. And of course, these look like somebody made them. Look like they took some kind of round stock and cut them off. So I tried to fix it to get it to work and it kind of worked, but it didn't. See, there's one that's in there. See, it springs back. So that way when it rolls one way, it releases and then when it rolls the other way this part of the gear locks on those little rollers and of course you gotta remove this flywheel and there's threads in there and of course they tell you to buy some kind of flywheel pulling tool well all you need is a 14 millimeter bolt 14 millimeter with 1.0 thread pitch which I got at my local hardware store we got a hardware store here that's got a lot of good hardware selection they got a big hardware selection so they had one so you just screw that in it'll hit the end of the crankshaft and pop this off in case you got one of these and you're you're trying to fix it or figure out why the electric start don't work that's why so of course I went on the inner screen and went on eBay and I found this with this gear and the needle bearing free shipping $33.25 that's a deal but it said in the listing that one of these was missing. Everything else was there, but one of these was missing. So, went on the inner screen and found that little roller. And that was another what? Five bucks? Nine fifty-nine? Ten bucks? So, I got the parts, then I had to buy a gasket, no this is the gasket, the gasket was that much, this thing was cheap, was like three or four dollars with the shipping, he didn't send me an invoice, oh well. And then I cleaned the carburetor. Change the oil. It's got a little tiny screen on it for an oil filter. Clean that. Uh, check the valves. Make sure the backlash on the valves was okay. Check them. Two thousandths is what they had to be. That worked out good. They were okay. And uh, put some uh, dinosaur syrup in it. That's oil. And some dinosaur juice. That's gasoline. And let's uh, see if this thing will start. Oh yeah! One other thing! Remember? The solenoid was no good. I was hitting the button and it was clicking. The solenoid was clicking. 
Now you can go on the inner screen and buy one of these OEM ones, or they're probably not OEM, they're probably aftermarket one. Pretty cheap, but since I own a lawnmower shop, I just use the four post lawnmower solenoid. So you can go on the inner screen and buy the actual aftermarket one, pretty cheap. Or if you're in a bind and you don't want to wait, just go get a lawnmower one, as long as it's got four connections, because that's what this had. Two connections, and it had two wires running to it, which I cut. And those are the two wires, because there's the plug, the same existing plug. Works the same way, it's just a solenoid. So, let's see if it'll start. Fingers crossed. Where's that choke at? We got it running. We know it drives, goes in reverse. Now all I gotta do is take the drivetrain out of this and put it in that Jeep. Oh boy. That's gonna be a lot of work. Gonna have to lengthen the drive shaft. Gonna have to hook brakes up to the Jeep. Gonna have to hook up a gas pedal, shifter, a shifter for the low, the high, and the reverse. Oh, this isn't gonna be easy. But, nothing ever is, so, stay tuned, and there's your dinner. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like this channel. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, go to our web store, we got tarot merchandise, and there's your dinner again. More dinner. Lots of dinner. <laughs>